I haven't asked to leave the property, but I'm guessing that's about what's to happen. Yeah, sir, I think that's what they're going towards. What was your name again, sir? I'm sorry, Senator? Senator Jeff Merkley. Jeff? U.S. Senator Jeff Merkley. I've now been asked to leave the property, and so I'll, I'll comply with that. Two weeks ago, Senator Jeff Merkley tried to get a tour of an immigrant detention center at an abandoned Walmart building in Brownsville, Texas, that houses children. Senator Merkley was not allowed inside. No one would grant him an interview. But today, for the first time since Senator Merkley was asked to leave the premises, our own Jacob Soboroff finally did get a tour. He joins me now just outside that facility in Brownsville, Texas. Jacob, you were with a few other journalists let into that facility. What did you see? You know, um, Chris, I have been inside uh, federal, a federal prison before. I've been inside uh, several county jails. Uh, this place is called a shelter, but uh, effectively these kids are uh, incarcerated. There are 1,400 of them, over 1,400 of them, uh, that uh, are spending not weeks, months uh, inside this place. They're not actually literally in cages or in cells, but uh, I kid you not, one of the first things an employee of the shelter said to me is uh, when we walked inside, can you uh, try to smile at these kids? Um, because it's weird to see people from the outside. They feel like animals locked up in cages uh, being looked at. It's, uh, it was an extraordinary thing to see. Well, what, what, so t t talk me through what's it look like. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a Walmart that's been, re you know, re refashioned. Uh, is it yeah, so open air rooms with beds? Like it is. These kids are free to move around. Um, there are there are four beds. It's basically a dormitory structure. You know, it's it's not uh, not uh, nice by the standards of a place to be incarcerated. You know, it's fresh paint everywhere. There's a cafeteria for kids to go to, about 300 uh, at a time. There are four beds uh, per room, uh, or at least they're supposed to be, but right now there are five. They have a variance in here uh, from the state of Texas since uh, May because of this overcrowding crisis that's been uh, created, manufactured, basically. It's a self inflicted crisis is uh you know, our colleague Julia Ainsley was saying earlier today on MSNBC because the Trump administration is taking children from their parents and effectively making them unaccompanied minors. Uh, this place used to be just for kids that would walk across the border for the most part, uh, virtually 100 uh, percent on their own. And now you're getting more and more kids, up to 30 uh, percent as of right now, according to one official inside, uh, that have been separated from their parents over the last uh, so couple of months. They have recreation, but they're allowed, they're allowed outside, Chris, uh, where we are in the fresh air, uh, for two hours a day. Uh, uh, and the rest of 22 hours a day, they're inside a, a former uh, Walmart. So, all right, you got 1,400 kids in there. Um, and, and maybe 70 percent, again, we should be clear, unaccompanied minors is something that started and they, the government has struggled to figure out what to do with them. you got a 15-year-old, 16-year-old who's walking across the border. Now you've got kids that are being rendered unaccompanied because they're going to be taken from their parents who tend to be younger. So do we have a sense of the age range of these 1,400 kids in there? Yeah, and they're all boys, I should say, and they're from age 10 to 17. So the thing that strikes me, you know, as a parent of a two and a half year old boy is what about from zero to 10? You know, where are those kids? This is one of 100 facilities like this in the United also. States across 17 states. This is the, this is the largest facility of its kind uh, in the country. Um, but it is. But but there are 99 other ones. And uh, so and we're only talking about 10 to 17 year old boys in here. OK, so 10 to 17 year old. You, you're I got one boy, two girls. You got you got a two and a half year old boy. Um, you got 1400 boys age 10 to 17. Now, the ideal ratio would be 2800 adults to look after 1400 boys between those two ages. What how many adults are watching after that many boys? One to eight is the ratio. So there is one uh, staff member uh, for every incarcerated uh, shelter resident is what they is what they call them. And uh, it's it's um, it's organized chaos in there. I mean, it, it, it's 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 hectic, but it, but it is organized. And like I said, there you know, 300 kids at a time are going to the chow. That's why I say it's like looking at a prison or in a, in a jail. You know, they're all led to chow. There, there was a group of kids doing a you know, again, I kid you not, Tai Chi or recreation or a group of boys sitting in the former loading dock of the Walmart in a, in a theater watching uh, the Disney movie Moana. They're just trying to keep these kids busy. They go to class for six hours a day and learn about American history. And honestly, one of the most striking things that I saw when you go in there is that this place has a lot of American history all over the place. Quotes, inspirational quotes, I guess, um, from former presidents. And uh, the first one that you see when you walk in is, is, is Donald Trump. There's a mural of Donald Trump. That's a mural of Donald Trump with, with a quote from Donald Trump. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, talking about if you don't, you know, if you don't win the battle, there's a way to win the win the war. It's uh, it is very I mean, strange does not do it justice. Uh, what it's like in there. It's uh, let me, it's let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Um, so you've got these. This is a nonprofit 
that has been contracted with the federal government to run this facility. Um, what is the level of training and of, of these grown-ups who, you know, watching eight boys per grown-up for 22 hours a day is like, that's very serious work that requires very serious training. Yeah, and I want to be really clear. There, I think that there is very serious work and very serious yeah. training that goes on. These are accredited, licensed professionals, not just by the state of Texas, but again, this is a licensed facility, and it brings up the much larger issue because you have teachers in here, licensed teachers, licensed uh, clinicians, uh, three on-call doctors that are in this facility or around this facility at any time, uh, a whole, a 48-person medical staff uh, that's inside here. But what's being talked about with the administration is moving or bringing children away from facilities like this, licensed facilities, and onto 10 cities on federal property. And what I was told tonight is that those 10 cities that are being looked at here in Texas and throughout the state of California are unlicensed facilities. It won't require necessarily on federal property because it's an emergency situation, the level of training, the types of professionals wow. uh, that are taking care of the kids that are in this facility uh, tonight when they go lights out at 9 p.m. So, um, final question. Do you know, have these kids, the ones now, unaccompanied minors are one thing, right? But of the 30%, the ones who, who, who traveled with a parent or a guardian or a grandparent and were taken away from them, have they, are there reg, regular contacts they get to have with that person? They wouldn't say regular, uh, but they said it's up. It's basically up to the penal institution where they are. Because again, remember these these kids before this policy was announced, most of these kids would end up in ICE family detention with their families, which is uh, whatever you want to think about it. They were together with their families. Right. Now they're they're being separated from their parents. They're being taken to the federal courthouse here in South Texas. Their parents are being remanded to the U.S. Marshal's custody and they go to federal prison. So if the federal prison or the, the Department of Refugee Resettlement in HHS says that that parent can call the child, the parent's allowed to call the child. But it's up to the penal institution. If they, they said it happens, but it's not happening on a regular basis. All right, well, Jacob, this is fantastic reporting. Thank you for giving us a glimpse inside. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for staying on us, man. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.